So uh, this is the first part of the lesson and, um, and this is why I ask Abby um, to have an athletic stance, an athletic position. So I always use this term. I know in a, in a tennis world we always hear uh, the ready position, but I do like using the term athletic stance. So I'm making the ball bounce and on my uh, on my strings just to get her ready. Uh, and then I'm asking her to move to the ball, stop, catch the ball when she stops, and and then recovering just to mimic a movement to the ball where she feels like she's moving to the ball, she's slowing down and stopping and stopping when she hit, which should create a sense of balance and, and readiness when she's in athletic position. Cross over everything. Up, left arm is out, like we're catching it. Full balance, good finish. Can we finish again with tapping the back? The, the back. Ta, ta, ta. Bravo. Hey. And then obviously we Where's progress the now with the racket where I'm asking to uh, Abby to Crossover obviously back. move to the ball, stopping up. and then really freezing that shot at the end. Um, again, I like to start slow so the student has awareness of her shot and as you can see also I'm asking her to transfer her weight with the back leg going around as she swing the, as she hit the ball. Good, good. Good, that's it. Left arm is out. Yeah, okay. everything Good. is slow right now and then okay. slowly okay. we'll uh, increase the, the, the tempo, we'll but I like, yes. Catch, bravo. Good, now we're gonna hit it. And I want the left arm right there. Here you go, left arm is out. Mm, mini T-Rex, kind of, we can do better. Again, hey, tap, 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 tap. Yes, up, good. Again, hey, quick crossover. And stop, quick crossover, good, good. Bravo. Yes, side. Up and we lean. Stay athletic with your knees. Bravo. Come on, girl. The first part of the session of the the first part of the lesson was to uh, emphasize the the movement to the ball, the balance, and and any hitting the ball while balance. In this part. I'm just isolating a little bit more uh, the swing itself where I ask the, my student to be very up close to the net. Why? Because I like to have the racket kind of going over the net to exaggerate the, the, the extension of the arm and, and the follow through. Um, the second thing, as you can see, she's hitting the ball uh, in the air without letting the ball bounce just to emphasize the feeling of the racket speed, which I would like to translate when she will be hitting the ball, like rallying. So we're doing both sides, the forehand and the backhand. As, as you saw, the left hand, I started with actually just the left hand. Um, as you know, the, the two hand backhand, the left hand is one of the, uh, is the key hand. And, um, and then we started with just isolating that left and then obviously we brought back her dominant hand, which is the right one. Um, and now we are progressing now from uh, a little bit further away from the net. Now we she start to put all the pieces together um, where she's, I'm asking her to move to the ball, create a good racket speed um, and um, uh, always aiming, uh, I always like to put zones because it gives always context and purpose to the, to the students. Target my friend, ta, ta, ta. that's it, good tap at the end. Go. And now, like, right now, she, we, she just did Much forehand cross court, um, and now she's doing backhand cross court. Another thing, as you can notice, she is she's a good player, and then she's a green ball. But you can see we are doing it from the service line. The reason is, like I said, I like to start slow and small, where we um, emphasize a sense of success, where. She can definitely f play from the baseline and, and rally pretty well. But right now we're looking on, I'm working on, you know, aggressiveness and, and, and the racket speed and she can do it with more success closer to the net. And obviously at some point we'll progress further and further. Um, but for me, I like to, 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 to do things progressively. Um, also, now we can see that Abby is working on volley. Same thing, same principle where I always ask the students to stop, freeze, and have a sense of um, awareness. Uh, when you stop for the shot, you kind of like can 
have a check on yourself where you are where the racket is and so on and you will see in the next progression i will put the pieces together where we're gonna do the approach and the volley i do like to okay, like i said to put things in context that just working in isolation volleys might not translate in a real like tennis game so why are we doing volleys well to take time away from my opponent uh, because we had a good approach previously and i always want to combine and connect the dots i want my students actually to connect the dots where i'm approaching the net put my opponent out of position and just finishing under them to not give my opponent time to to react always combining for me for me it's very important to con to combine shots where why why are we doing things why are we doing volleys and so on so you will see in the next progression we'll do an approach shot and a volley uh, same thing with the zone i try to mix up a little bit short a little deep but you can see we have some yellow lines and cones where I, we um i want my students to uh, be able to aim and, and why are we doing this? Shall we? The approach and the volley? Okay. Approach down the line and then after cross court and then I'll give you the choice. Coming up and then the volley. But you have two options with the volley. The short one, which is kind of like a touch drop shot before the yellow line, or more like an angle a little bit deeper toward the cones. Now the approach I'm gonna call it. Okay. The, the, the direction I call it, the volley, anywhere you want. So this is the final progression of um, the approach and volley where now we okay. are um, right. playing and points way, against each other. So I'm feeding a short ball to, uh, to her either on the forehand or backhand right. side. Um, the we at first we do a couple around the first I'm round I'm giving her the direction of the line. approach either down the line or cross court yep. uh, and then she chooses where she wants to hit the volley depending on where she hit the approach. The, the, the best way to win the point and then the final round I'm right. giving her the choice of the approach and obviously the volley I always like to at some point give some freedom to my uh, uh, students because it makes them you know being a good tennis player you have to be a good problem solver and think for yourself and, uh, and that's why I want them to have freedom to to be able to realize what was the right choice was not the right choice and kind of learn as uh, as they go also she, it's a student that is very competitive and always likes to um, compete and play points and um, I always like to emphasize the, the the personality and the character of each student to to you know um, re-emphasize what they uh, they like and, and make them you know, happy and successful nope. Um, nope. on the court. Seven, four. Come on, champ. You had your chance, huh? By the shoulder, big rotation. 